where do you find in your life right now? Because you're doing so many things. Like you have two uh, two YouTube channels. You know, you have the podcast. You're running. Uh, you know, the documentary. Like family. Where do you find the most joy in your life right now? Great question. Um, it's all. It's always found in my wife and in our family time. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's just no. There's no replacement for that. Um, very recently, and this is a very timely question because I've been dealing with illness for like the past three weeks. I've had a lot of home time and just time away from the studio and all of the in-between moments of, of card games and board games and playing catch with the boys in the back and dance parties. And uh, we did a staycation for my birthday, like in the city. And nice. my wife, you know, like those moments to me, like they... I, I'm realizing more and more as the kids get older, like it's, um, I know it's stereotypical to, to say like they grow up so fast, but our oldest is turning 10 this year. He's more than halfway done wow. with, with being a kid. And so <laughs> I'm just like fully realizing that, um, I don't, I just don't have a ton of time left, um, mm. with all of us being a family in one home without kids going off to college and starting their own lives. And so, yeah, all of that is, is held in the balance with all of the work that I do. And my mm. common refrain with the work that I do in the diversification of what I do is that it's always a vehicle for me to have flexibility in being mm. able to have that time. And it's a tough balance because that's not always the case, right? You know, having right. to go to New York to premiere our documentary and that was right after a trip to Dallas with Music Bed. And um, there are, there are, there's push and pull, there's give and take. Um, mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, like even just yesterday, like me being sick and s- staying home for the full day and making that choice. Um, even the doctor being like, I can write you a note for your employer. And I was like, oh, I'm self-employed. Like that, yeah. <laughs> that feeling. And he was like, oh man, that's the dream. And I was like, I know, <laughs> like it, it definitely yeah. is. Um, yeah, that, that flexibility for me and knowing that like, even if one thing crashes and burns or one thing isn't a success or, you know, if the documentary is not profitable, which most likely probably won't be, you know, like it's okay because I have, um, these hedges of protection around mm. all the things that I'm doing. Um, and as long as I'm, I've kind of equated it to this metaphor of like these, these fires that are going and like the, the if, I don't know if we discussed this on your episode on rally caps, but like Maybe. if there's embers going, like it's always easy to mm. like kick it back up and get it going again, as far as mm. sustainability and profitability in a, in a business sense. Um, right. but like, as long as those embers are there, like a fire can always be reintroduced and, and made healthy again. Um, and so work wise right now, I'm just really, really passionate about running, um, just got into coaching. And so that's incredibly exciting. And then just using all the filmmaking and artistic skills to bring to that world has, has just been wildly fulfilling and yeah. working side by side with Cyrus, um, who moved up from Florida has been working with me since January, February. Uh, yeah, it's just been super, super special to do that. I love that. Uh, One of my questions was going to be kind of be, um, like, how do you dedicate focus for all these individual things? And I, I listened to a podcast that you were on, I forget which one, but you talked about the benefit of having an employee and being able to delegate a lot of work, I guess from like a, business perspective like what did it actually take to for you to get to the point where you were comfortable to have an employee it was um i I felt like once i released the classroom which was my wedding photography and filmmaking course that that was a substantial enough um a substantial enough amount of income to really feel comfortable in bringing someone on salaried uh because Mm -hmm. Yeah, the revenue over three different um, enrollment periods of that padded the bank account enough um, to make me feel like there was a ton of options available. It's what gave me the ability to feel comfortable investing in the documentary and really having no idea what the cap would be on what the spend would be. Right. There's no, there's no 
world where I'm able to fund the documentary without the classroom existing. Mm. Um, so there's that. And then it, it was also just a point of like, I, I actually can't continue to keep all these embers alive without the help of somebody else. And so I'm kind of coming to a place now where I think I could see a future where I, I know there'll be a future where Cyrus moves on from working with me because he's mm -hmm. wildly talented and just has that edge that we all, you yeah. know, can see in different individuals. As Danny likes to say, he's got that dog yeah. in him. <laughs> like undoubtedly. And dude's in the gym yeah. every day and is just so disciplined. Um, everything he touches is, is just beautiful. Like he knows how to do things. Mm. And so, you know, when he wants to spread his wings and do his own thing, uh, you know, cause right now we're splitting responsibilities on the coaching front for running as well. He's helping with admin with that as well. There's a very real possibility that we, you know, partner on business endeavors in the future, but I know that he has the hunger and desire to make some art of his own as well. Love that. Um, so I'm just starting to realize like as things kind of change and evolve at creative club, there'll be pretty significant changes over the next six months. Um, as far as allocation of space and like, uh, just changes within the structure of our studio, I'll have to really reckon with like how many days I want to work from home versus come to the studio. Cause my commute's 45 minutes to, to get here, which is a, which is a yeah. lot. And, yeah, it's and so I have to evaluate, like, as, you know, Steven thinks about moving away from Chicago and their eventual um, goal to end up in the Northeast again, um, mm. you know, like that, that kind of stuff. It's like, you know, how often do I need to be at the studio? Uh, how much can I um, get back with another hour and a half of my day of not commuting at all? And so yeah. we're starting to figure out the idea of um, switching rooms in our house and uh, putting the two littles in the same room upstairs and then uh, our, our, our girl's bedroom becoming my home office and like really outfitting it to be exactly what I need so that, you know, when Cyrus inevitably wants to move on years from now or, you know, whatever the case is that I have more of the structure for myself to, to be disciplined and do things, you know, it's like the, the way we film my running right now is a lot of Cyrus on a gimbal riding an mm -hmm. electric bike. And I'm like, well, once that's gone, like I need to figure out how to film myself running again and do it in a way that combines cinematography in my own regard as well. Or, you know, there's, there's tons of things to, to think through. Um, but yeah, I don't even remember what the original question was. <laughs> no, that's okay.